This introductory video demonstrates how to position a patient in the all fours or knee chest position for resolution of shoulder dystocia. It also highlights some important points when performing feet or neck traction and internal maneuvers after repositioning. The all fours position is one of the methods used to resolving shoulder dystocia. It is usually described as a woman resting on her knees and hands without flexion of the hips. However, the exact mechanism of the all fours position in facilitating the resolution of shoulder dystocia is not clear. Let us then consider the idea of a reverse McRoberts position. The mechanism of the McRoberts position is hyperflexion of the maternal hips, cephalid rotation of the pelvis, and straightening of the lumbosacral lordosis. In that case, if we reverse the McRoberts position, that will become a knee chest position, meaning to fully flex the maternal hips, bringing the knees up to the chest, and resting on the forearms. This may achieve a similar effect as a McRoberts position. And compared to the traditional all force position, this may also provide more support and stability. Regardless, these are just changes in maternal position, and additional fetal neck traction or internal maneuvers are still required to disimpact the obstructed fetal shoulders. There are a few points to note regarding the application of traction and maneuvers with the patient in an all force position. First of all, when applying traction, caution must be taken to avoid further birth injury. If repeated or excessive fetal neck traction was used before the patient was turned to all force, brachial plexus injury may already have occurred at the anterior shoulder behind the pubic symphysis. After repositioning the patient to an all force position, if we continue to apply fetal neck traction, we must keep in mind that this force is now applied to the contralateral shoulder. Caution must be taken to avoid causing bilateral brachial plexus injury. Secondly, as we mentioned in our previous video regarding posterior arm extraction and internal maneuvers, it is important to insert the correct hand according to the fetal facing direction. Therefore, when performing internal maneuvers with the patient now upside down, the opposite hand should now be used instead, as the fetal facing direction is now reversed. Thirdly, the hand should be inserted from above instead of from below, as the maternal pelvis is also reversed. The most spacious part of the pelvis are its posterior lateral sides, which is now at 1 to 2 o'clock or 10 to 11 o'clock. Fourthly, when performing internal rotational maneuvers with the patient in a supine position, it can be augmented by suprapubic pressure on the contralateral side at the same time. However, once the patient is repositioned, this would be hard to apply. Finally, when performing posterior arm extraction with a patient in a supine position, we are advised to pull upwards to facilitate rotation and delivery. However, the original posterior arm which rests anterior to the sacrum is now at 12 o'clock after repositioning. We should therefore insert the correct hand from above, grasp the fetal forearm and pull it downward instead of upwards to facilitate rotation of the shoulders. In summary, a knee chest position simulates a reverse McRoberts position, which may also give greater stability and support. Regarding fetal traction, we should be cautious when attempting traction on the contralateral shoulder, so to avoid bilateral brachial plexus injury. And lastly, when performing internal maneuvers and posterior arm extraction, we should bear in mind that the maternal pelvis and fetal facing direction are now both reversed. Therefore, the opposite hand should be used and should be inserted from above. The direction of forearm traction should now be downwards instead of upwards, in order to rotate and disimpact the fetal shoulders. Thank you for watching. To learn more about the technique and management of obstetric emergencies, please visit our SOFI website.